The Monerotopia Price Report segment is sponsored by Local Monero. Avoid using KYC exchanges. Buy and sell Monero directly for fiat peer-to-peer. Hey, guys. What's up, buddy? How's it going? It's good. XMR Bazaar is looking great, man. I know, I'm very uh, excited about it. I'm very excited about it. Also a little nervous when I see some of the listings go up. I'm like, oh boy, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got to be on top of it, you know. Is that gun part one of those type of gun parts? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not, you know, I'm not an expert in those areas. So the kind of the gray areas right now, I'm defaulting to let's just, de- you know, keep delisted for now until we have enough resources to properly assess things. So I got the admin going. Um, Anarchio is still building like the admin panel. So I don't even think she'll, she'll have access to that later today. Uh, but yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. We, we, you know, we're not looking to, we don't want to bring too much attention to ourselves for unnecessary reasons, because like I said, the idea is tremendous in and of itself. If people can just use this platform peer to peer to buy and sell legal goods. The yeah. gray area things is great too. You know, like we don't want to dismiss that, especially, you know, things like, like marijuana, right? Like if we could, you know, it's perfectly legal in New York to, to grow your own Monero, uh, Monero, to grow your own Mon- uh, you marijuana own plants in New York. Yeah. And yeah. You could, you could, you could do that as well. Home you could even use the, the pasture raised organic Monero. Yeah. You use the heat generated from your miners to, to keep your, uh, marijuana f- farm warm as well. Um, but yeah, you could do that here in New York, but like in some States it's not legal, obviously federally, right. You're not allowed to, to ship it across state line so things like that we got to make it very clear that people are just following the rules in their jurisdiction but by no means would i like if some if there was a um a marijuana store in new york that accepts monero i would put it on the business listings if somebody was listing that they're new york city based and they deliver did do deliveries i would see that as being like legal for example so I, you know, I want to, I want to get close to that line. I'm obviously all about free market pe- people being able to decide what they want to buy and sell as long as, you know, golden rule, as long as we're not hurting anybody else. Right. Just acting yeah. like as, as true libertarians as, as closely as we can without making ourselves a target where the, the feds just come in and, uh, ban us. <laughs> right. Yeah. As what it is, what it comes down to. What do you think, buddy? Um, yeah, as long as the feds don't come in and list stuff that shouldn't be listed so that the feds can come in and ban it, you know, <laughs> FBI right. foils, another FBI plot. Yeah. Right. We gotta, we gotta be careful with that. And, uh, so that's why we're trying to keep it as, uh, you know, non-controversial as, as possible for now, for now. Just yeah. Buying and the selling Craigslist, things. The Craigslist, Craigslist, but with Monero. Exactly. Well, speaking of foiled plots, uh, it's like that whole uh, that whole plot to crush XMR's price with delistings and bullshit and fractional reserve is uh, slowly coming to an end. Looks like we basically recovered our steady state price, which um, oh wow, you know, roundabout ish has been one hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. So this is the weekly chart. You can see that you know ever since the the blow off top in twenty twenty one. Um, kind of a blow off top for ants, if you ask me, but, uh, yeah, it is what it is. But ever since then, um, we've been around the 150 mark ever since. Um, so we got the, we got the delisting, you know, a little bit of volatility and, and then things have come right back. We can zoom in a bit on the daily and, uh, you can see we've basically had just really nice, strong price action pretty much ever since breaking down this, uh, sorry, breaking, uh, breaking above this pleb line. Um, things have just continued to, to move to the upside, which, can't complain about that. Um, you can also see it reflected in the ratio, the, the XMR BTC ratio. As we said, it's kind of a very long-term bottoming pattern. Um, and we have already uh, started, looks like we've already started to make the rise out of that. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say the fat lady has chunk, uh, the fat lady has sung on this chart completely. I wouldn't say that this is, I mean, probably this is the bottom. That, that was probably the ultimate low there for this cycle. Uh, however, there could still be another round coming up here once that Ethereum ETF gets approved. That could take a few more weeks. Maybe it could take until, you know, August or something like that. 
could take a minute, but um, once that ETH ETF gets approved, there's probably going to be some impetus for the for the broader crypto markets in general, which means leverage, which means hype, which means more people coming in, right? So we might we we could theoretically see the the ratio. This is the XMR um, BTC ratio, but um, obviously Bitcoin will be a somewhat beneficiary of that. Obviously, ETH will be the primary beneficiary, but we could you know we we might see like another little kind of drop off and then and then. Uh, uh, before that, before this chart really, really starts starts to recover in earnest, um, let's take a look at the uh, XMR uh, Ethereum chart as well. Sorry, let me change my colors there. Okay, uh, XMR versus Ethereum. Uh, yeah, you can see we're we're not performing quite as well relative to Ethereum uh, for obvious reasons, right? Because the Ethereum price has been doing slightly better than Bitcoin um, ever since the news came of the ETF last week. Which, if you remember here on the show, we talked about this for months and months. I mean, ever since last year, we said, um, you know, when it looked like that BT, the Bitcoin ETF was coming, it was like, hey, Ethereum's not a security. Well, at least, you know, the network isn't a security and the courts have already ruled on it. Um, so if Bitcoin gets an ETF, Ethereum's getting one soon as well. And sure enough, that's that's what happened. So, yeah, we're going to have a little bit more problems. We're going to have to struggle a little bit harder um, as a price community to get our maximar versus ethereum price to come back a little bit higher um that's going to be a bit harder but uh hey you know just want to deliver deliver the news the price news um as it as i really see it uh we can take a look at the the divergences as well um obviously poloniex is, is going to be the lowest of them all because why wouldn't they be I, I don't know what their deal is but um they just they just love to to falsely list Monero uh, low, but it's not like they have any volume anyways. <laughs> they don't matter, but uh, it's still funny. Still very funny. Uh, I guess that's about it for the price here on Monero, but we could take a look at some other good metrics. One thing that happened this week, um, let's reload this chart. I don't think this is quite right. One thing that happened this week is um, the, I think it was Europol shut down. They shut down some major botnet that was consuming Oh, let's see. It looks like it was consuming somewhere on the range of about 0.6, uh, maybe 0.8 giga hashes. Um, so they shut that thing down, and then uh, and then you can see here that the the hash rate dropped off significantly. Uh, that looks to me like it might have been a recent botnet. I, they said it was a long, um, highly sophisticated, intricate botnet. Um, okay, but this does kind of look like they recently turned it on and then got shut down. I don't know. They arrested the dude, and um, and yeah, then the hash rate, the, the XMR hash rate dropped. That's fine. I don't, I don't see any problem. Sorry, guys, my room was getting too hot. I had to turn off all my miners. <laughs> yeah, summer's here, you know. Um, Tux, uh, you know, and you're a busy guy. You've been you've been developing stuff for Cake Wallet. Had to shut down the, that botnet. Um, yeah, so that's what our that's what the uh, the hashes look like. Uh, it was it was an interesting development, um, but it doesn't look like. You know, when I saw the news, I was like, oh, God, like, where's our, you know, how's the hash rate doing? But it's it's actually fine. It's basically in trend with with the past really for a year and a half. Uh, let's take a look at how many transactions we've been doing lately. Um, kind of oscillating, right? We got we, we had the attack, came back down, I guess another attack blip. And then we're just kind of oscillating here between 20K and um, 40K. So that, that's interesting that we're getting more oscillation. Um, I guess that would maybe kind of be expect, uh, maybe kind of. Yeah, maybe that would be expected. I don't know. Um, it, I mean, you get you get waves of people that are buying stuff or not buying stuff. Um, maybe there's some. Maybe I could put this on a four year analysis. I don't know. Um, that would be an interesting idea. But uh, yet I digress. That's that's too far in the technical weeds to talk about four year analysis. Um, peers seen. We've seen about twenty two thousand peers in the last two weeks. Cool. Um, let's uh, let's take a look at the rest of the degenerate. Crypto markets, starting with shit coins, um, but obviously you know XMR isn't included on that. But I just colloquial, colloquially say shit coins. These are the boomer shit coins. Obviously, you know the old ones. This isn't the new stuff. Sorry, guys. I I, I guess I'm too close to the Gen X level to um, <laughs> doxing myself, uh, but too close to the Gen X area to um, <laughs> to care too much about all the newfangled meme coins that all the uh, that all the Zoomers are playing with these days. Anyways. Uh, yeah, we got XMR here has been performing well relative to its own 100-day um, moving average. You can also see that Ethereum here in gray has been performing well, uh, performing quite good as well. Uh, everything else has kind of been slowly, slowly bleeding off. Uh, the fact that XMR is actually putting on U.S. dollar gains 
that that says something important for us. I think that's basically them releasing Steam, allowing, quote unquote, allowing it. There might be, we are probably now moving into a situation where they have less and less clamp down control ability on the XMR price because we've been forced even more to pivot towards a more organic market. Nevertheless, um, there are still exchanges. They probably are still doing fractional reserve. Now that Kraken is being heavily attacked by the U.S. government, who knows what they're actually being forced to do under gag um, behind closed doors or and or the kinds of deals that they may have had to make in secret um, to avoid being attacked too harshly by the government. Maybe their peers, the driven snow. I'm not sure about that, but, you know, I just think about these things, right? I think, well, maybe it could be this, could be that. I'm not trying to sit here and be the guy with the answer that tells you what conspiracies are and aren't right. That's not what's happening here. We're just, um, we're just using our creative brains to think about what could happen and how could they attack Monero in the price arena. So I say that to say that it is possible that they're letting off a steam valve here, um, to, 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 for Monero's price to rise. Maybe they can't do anything about it. It could indicate the potential for another big run in crypto. And the fact that the ETF, the Ethereum ETF should get approved, um, so it was approved, but it's a matter of actually getting all the uh, all the ducks in a row, all the lowercase j's dotted um, before they can go live on the stock market. And when they go live, that is when all the actual real U.S. dollar funds start pouring into the ETF and they have to buy real Ethereum to represent that. Um, you know, commensurate with that, let's go ahead and pull up the BTC chart um, just just because uh, these are weekly candles. Commensurate with that, it looks like the Mount Gox coins. There was um, they moved a whole bunch of coins to some new addresses. The the Bitcoin there, uh, and I think also the Bitcoin Cash. So people are getting paid back. They've already been getting paid back in fiat, but we haven't seen any crypto payments yet. Um, the movement of these coins kind of signals that they're probably making progress of some kind on actually paying people back their Bitcoin. It would be extremely interesting to me if they started releasing that Bitcoin now con concurrent with the Ethereum ETF being approved. That would be very interesting to me. Um, I had maintained for a long time that they would probably dump those coins at the bottom of the market um, rather than the top of the market. Um, but it has taken so long and they've done such a good job of, of delaying this and then delaying it more um, that uh, we're actually at basically the all-time high for Bitcoin. So um, yeah, let's go ahead and talk... Uh, Let's talk a little bit more about this ETH BTC chart. I have long maintained that Ethereum will gain market cap parity with Bitcoin. Um, I've said that for a long time, and I, I think we're still looking at that. It's going to be a little bit harder because all the degeneracy can now happen on Bitcoin as well, but it's still a shitty platform for doing that. Ethereum still has the native DEX, Uniswap, and all of the extra little tools and oracles and all the crazy stuff and flash loans and et cetera, you name it, stable coins. You can do all of that on Ethereum easily with, uh, you know, you just install some some shit wallet in your in your probably <laughs> shit browser. Um, and then you can start trading all that, right? You can just play in that arena. The normies can access it. If you want to do that on Bitcoin, you're going to have problems. So while, yes, all of the degeneracy and memes on Bitcoin mean that it's going to be harder for Ethereum to gain parity because um, now Bitcoin is absorbing some of that. I still think that that's the more likely scenario. At the moment, Bitcoin um, versus Ethereum chart has gotten back into this sort of like very long uptrending line here. Even the breakdown of that line to me um, feels a bit scammy, but hey, you know, that's what markets are effectively. So um, it looks like it's going to close this week here. Ethereum is going to close relative to Bitcoin. It's going to close above that line, um, getting back into this range. Um, another movement to the upside here effectively signals that this that, that this structure, really kind of a sideways triangle, this structure is going to get broken to the upside. Like if we see another green week here, especially one that's nice and positive, eventually this thing will break to the upside. Um, it's it's probably, I mean, I, I say, you know, it's kind of it's kind of like shill to hear that. Like, oh, if you break this, well, then it's going to do that, right? It's like, if we cross this tiny threshold right here, uh, it's going to 10x, right? I'm not, I'm not trying to sound stupid like that. But um, yeah, I mean, just overall, this thing is set up to... Um, it's in a zone here where it can show good performance and that will signal what's going to happen over the coming um, probably months, probably for the rest of the year. Um, same thing here with Bitcoin dominance. Um, you can see that this thing is now flirting with breaking down this line. It kind of flirted with that here back here. Uh, but that was also in January. You'll notice look at the bottom here. That was um, that was back in January, right before the ETF approval. So 
um, yeah, that, that was, that was gonna, that was always meant to come back to the upside for another period of time. But right now I feel like this chart is meant to break down. Um, it's probably going to break down. So, um, take a look at some of the other, Oh, look at Xano. I haven't looked at this chart since we last spoke. Um, so this chart is looking like Xano is wanting to form some kind of bottom here. Man, maybe I need to go pick up some Xano. I'm going to go pick up some Xano. All right. Be right back guys. No, just kidding. Uh, yeah, here's a, so, so I would, I love it when you, when things hit their nice, um, nice levels here. I don't know if y'all can see that, but this here is the, um, let me try and zoom in. Actually, I won't zoom in. Here's what we're going to do. Um, these are moving averages, the white lines here, which you probably can't see. Let's turn down the base transparency on that. Maybe you can see it better. Um, hopefully that comes out a little bit better. Those are moving averages, right? And this is a short chart, um, only since July of last year, so almost a year. I like it when things hit nice, solid, um, clean levels. So I would like to see this price make one little less dip here to the moving average. And that would be like, to me, that's a perfect buying opportunity. Um, if we're going to consider that Xano is probably... Um, a reasonably good new project. Let's just assume that Cryptozoidberg does his thing and it's gonna be good and uh, and it proves itself, right? This thing has got a lot of a lot of gains to make here potentially in the future. This thing was just launched. Um, it's a brand new project. It's only up, you know, from its from its launch price. It's only up currently 138 percent, which for crypto is absolutely nothing. Um, Again, I'm not trying to be a Xano shill here. I haven't looked at the tech. I don't know. I just know that privacy coins are like, everyone's like privacy coins, right? So like there's, if we're going to get more big bullish broad action, there's a good chance that um, privacy coins could um, could increase. Um, all of us want privacy coins now. Not you, not not Darrow. Sorry, Darrow. Guys, you guys, y'all screwed up too bad. Like it was just too bad. This, this chart is now breaking down. Expect this thing to come to this area here. Um, just not good. We won't focus on that too much. I think we beat that dead horse sufficiently. Um, GameStop, GameStop came back to like, I don't know, some regular normal level. Um, I think it was R. I think I had this chart on R USDT. What is R doing? Yeah, they had their like kind of scam pump here and now they're coming back down 154% when no one else was doing that kind of action. Okay, cool. XMR versus Zcash. So Monero is kind of just, uh, you know, uh, we, we, of course, you know, that was the delisting down 44% currently down about 25% from that ultimate high. But I mean, long-term, this chart is just, <laughs> this chart is just up and up and up and up and up. Um, this is what happens, right? This is when you, when you pay your founders 20% or 25% of every block and your technology, like the implementation, te the technology is hypothetically better, but the implementation wasn't. So, um, everyone recognized that. Okay, sure. Um, let's take a look. It's at totally down to having all those projects participate in Monerotopia, though. For anybody listening, um, come talk tech, guys. Y'all have cool tech. Yeah, um, come talk. Come jump on the stage. Talk in person. I mean, we had we had I, there was amazing discussions going on between Zano Zano devs and Monero people last year. Um, grill grill sessions, and it, that ended with handshakes. <laughs> um just come come openly talk about your tech if you if you're actually into it for the right reasons if you're not just trying to pump some scam you should have no problem coming to present yeah. your tech have thick skin you know come to the table like okay if you flamed on twitter you've had some some bad vibes some bad juju in the past you know whatever come to it um come to the in person meeting with a neutral mindset willing to learn willing to be wrong and willing to like turn 180 degrees even in the very moment and be like oh crap that's a really good argument i hadn't thought about that um i i have sometimes like i will sometimes do that if i like didn't think of something and someone makes a good argument i'll be like hmm shit <laughs> you know that's that's a pretty good argument um like like the the proof of work versus proof of stake thing i i think it's awesome that cryptozoidberg is exploring proof of stake there the more that I think about the way that proof of work has been implemented, um, the way that this whole thing has gone down with all these pools, guys, we're basically making one of our arguments, you know, is, oh, well, pools wouldn't collude because they don't have the monetary in incentive, you know, because they're getting paid. <laughs> That's basically like it's a, it's a form of a proof of stake argument. I don't like the way that the proof of work um, situation has worked out with these pools. We're two pools across basically all the chains between two or three pools own more than 50 percent of the hash rate. Like. That's not a good situation. Maybe it's good enough, right? Maybe we have seen the case where chains haven't really been attacked by their own pools and it's been 10 or 10 or 15 years now. 
okay, maybe it's good enough, but that's maybe not ideal. I don't think we should just completely disqualify proof of stake when part of the proof of work model because of pools has some similarity to proof of stake. These are the kinds of things we could talk about, right? Like I wouldn't punch you or <laughs> I wouldn't call you a shithead or anything. Uh, you know, I would, I, I would rather just have a nice, calm, rational conversation debate you know, with people. So yeah, I mean, just trying to echo that sentiment that Doug put out there, like come to Minerotopia, let's chat it out. Like let's debate it, you know, and, Let's try and like set our biases aside and, and not like not get too wrapped up in the things that we think we know are true. And, you know, just really come at come at exploration from a neutral perspective. Um, let's see here. Let's take a look at the uh, we'll take a look at the um, macro and then we'll we'll call it a day. So we've got Dixie. This thing is just I don't know. It's it's just doing this kind of down channel thing. Um, at the moment, it kind of looks like it's probably about to break this uh, this down sloping line here. It's kind of been in this channel for a long time. Um, you, I could redraw these lines, but uh, yeah, not really necessary at the moment. Um, yeah, okay. So that that's that's kind of provided a little bit of impetus to stabilize um, the the stock market, which was falling for a little bit, um, and crypto, which was um, Ethereum had gone up, so that gave us some good some good push. But then the stock market was kind of coming down, so there was. It's kind of like this churn, right? This uncertainty in the markets. It seems like the markets aren't quite sure where to go at the moment. Um, let's see. We had talked about the S&P 500 last week, had this um, uh, had this um, bullish engulfing pattern on, uh, I think it was a Thursday. Yeah. So basically it opened, the markets opened higher, significantly higher, uh, but then they closed way lower. That's like, that's a bullish engulfing pattern. Usually that signals more downside. So far, it's only gone down one and a half percent extra. Um, I wouldn't trust this green candle here. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe. Uh, it's, it's hard to say. They, a lot of, you know, the, the, the stock markets are, they're really propped up. So when you try to, you know, trying to predict that they're going to go down is, is a dangerous proposition in, in a lot of cases. Um, same thing with the NASDAQ here, had that bullish engulfing pattern. Um, still doesn't look totally, totally good, but um, maybe perhaps this trend line right here, that trend line has been really like that's that's really the longest running trend line, um, at least for the past year. Like this right here, that is the trend line to watch. Maybe this thing is just going to kind of oscillate around it for a while. Um, does look like finally the retest has happened here of the previous all time high, which is this dotted line. Um, it wasn't a full retest, um, but you could basically consider this something like that. Um, so, yeah, stock market's kind of just chopping sideways. I, I don't like it doesn't feel it doesn't quite feel right, but that, that doesn't mean it has to go down. Uh, maybe it just needs to chop sideways a bit more. Uh, reverse repos are still just pushing sideways. So um, again, that's neutral. Um, let's see. Gold. Uh, obviously, we like gold and we like our gold backs. Um, this chart looks a bit toppy to me. It looks like a bit a bit of short term top short term toppy uh, for the moment. Uh, maybe not. Let's draw some pleb lines, see what we can come up with here. And yeah, that's not really, you can't really draw it that way. Um, it, it does look a bit toppy. I don't like that. It's kind of, it, this thing needs to recover. This thing needs to start moving to the upside, um, soon, or we might have a little bit more of a pullback here. I tend to think gold is still overall, it's still bullish. Um, this is gold times the dollar index. It's a, it's a bit of a, a weird thing to wrap your brain around. I won't go into depth explaining it right now, but instead of dividing one asset by another, sometimes you can multiply them together, um, especially something like the dollar index, which sort of has a range, right? It's not a trending chart, right? When you have things that are trending like NVIDIA stock versus Bitcoin, um, typically you want to divide those out. But when you're looking at an index versus an asset, often you want to multiply them together because, and especially if they're inversely correlated, um, um, another chart that was a big factor in my mind saying that gold is going to break out like it's it's the the, the pattern is clear that it's going to break out. Um, it was the gold times the Dixie chart. So I really am looking for this chart to to at some point t at least touch this purple line up here. Um, and that that could potentially signal a top in gold, a, a more longer term top in gold. Um, I do think that this is they've when gold goes up like this, they it's typically a release valve, right? They have to release some pressure because like, the market just forces them um, to do it, um, or the market is about to force them to do it, so they they do it ahead of schedule. Uh, yeah. Anyways, okay. Gold bonds. Um, nothing at bonds. Here's the bonds. 
um, nothing, nothing concerning here at the moment. Um, again, as we keep talking about, we're, <laughs> it's going to be boring. The bond chart is always going to be boring because well, they're bonds. Um, but again, you know, we're just looking for violent moves typically uh, with rates going to the downside and the, um, the inversion of the yield curve represented here. Highly inverted. When this thing starts spiking back up um, to not inverted territory, that's, that's a signal for us. That's tail risk. Um, and we will be very careful about what we're doing in the markets and we will get our bags ready um, to load up on, uh, on more risk assets when that happens. Um, we'll also look at other things like um, the unemployment. That will be a signal for us if the unemployment starts spiking up. Um, other other stuff. So, um, yeah, that's about it. No, no, no tail risk in the market currently. Nothing major. Things seem just kind of flat and neutral. Um, in the in the big macro picture, um, but you know XMR is performing quite well. It's actually performing well um, and going up when the rest of crypto is either flat or kind of drifting downwards. So um, yep, kind of a big a nice uh, a nice W here for Monero in the past week. And uh, hope you guys were buying. Peace.